Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today we're making some fun and easy, budget-friendly DIY home decor. I've got some little minis for you. They're perfect for a tier tray or some nice shelf filler pieces, but let's get started with today's DIYs. First up, I have this little wood block. I previously DIY'd the other side, so we're gonna make it a two-sided sign and paint the other side. And I've just got a paper bowl that once had some water and paint <laughs> that's dried up, so we're just reusing that. And I'm mixing up some different yellow paints with a little bit of brown paint. I wanted a, I don't know exactly how to describe the yellow I was going for, but Anyways, I'm just trying to use up all the paints that I have, and so I've been having fun trying to mix paints to get different colors and just using up what I have. So once I had the paint color that I liked, we're going to give this a couple of coats of paint, and I'm trying to leave the edges still white just so that it worked good with both sides of the paint. Um, you can actually see there's some little brown streaks in here because I didn't fully mix the paint, and I really liked how that came out. But we're going to give that just a couple coats. And because the sides were painted, um, I was able to just kind of wipe off the yellow paint that came over the edge with like a baby wipe, I think is what I was using here. And then I wanted to add some detail on the edge. So I tried to go in with my paint markers. And this was just not the right application for it. But once again, I was like, oh, I haven't used my paint markers in a while. Let me see if I can use them. So didn't that wasn't the way to go. So I ended up dry brushing with a stencil brush some brown paint along the edges. You're gonna see this change because when I first started this DIY, I wasn't sure, I knew what I wanna do for this DIY, but not the others, and I decided I wanted them to all kind of match. So we're gonna change that in a second, but the technique or, or something, or however you wanna say that, you can see I was just kind of like feathering it in, heavier on the edges, and then it faded it in a little bit. And then I pulled out this stamp set from the Dollar Tree. I do like the stamps, I think they, ink pad is not super strong um, but I do like how it looked on this piece it kind of gave a faded look and I liked it so I pulled out this pretty sunflower and just stamped that on I only have one color of ink so I did the black you can see there's one spot here where it didn't transfer so I just added it back on I like the clear stamps because you can just line it up and then also in that stamp pack was the word sunflower and I decided to put that in the bottom right hand corner of this sign. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up. And then this is when I decided to change the color palette. So I just went in over the brown with some gray paint and just once again kind of heavier on the edges and feathered it in a little bit. I just thought it kind of emphasized the edges a little bit and gave a nice little detail. So we're going with gray and yellow for these DIYs. I wasn't planning on necessarily doing more colored spring type stuff, but I love how this came out. And I feel like this color palette is neutral, but with a little bit of color that would be perfect for all summer long. For this DIY, we're just doing a little makeover on this succulent plant. This is from Dollar General. They have them for a dollar. I think I got them marked down because I bought several of them and I usually do that when they have stuff marked down. But I thought just painting this cement base would be a really fun way to add a pop of color to a tiered tray. So I, what I started doing was painting it yellow. I am carefully doing the top edge here. I do use my, well, I bump the camera, but I also use my heat gun to dry it so that I can let the plant down without any paint getting on it. But we're gonna paint this that pretty yellow color that I mixed up. And then I am taking some Waverly Clear Wax as you can see, I haven't been in there in a while, so I had to mix it up with a toothpick. And we're tinting that with a little bit of brown paint because originally I was going to do some brown on this. So you're gonna see once again, this DIY is gonna take a couple, couple different turns, but I still wanted to share it with you because the clear wax um, allowed it to be like very movable and wipeable. And even though I ended up changing the colors after the wax that was on there, it made it very easy to do. So I'm just brushing it on with my stencil brush and then wiping it off with a paper towel. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. That is a free thing, there's nothing to it. Just hit that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and that makes sure that YouTube will let you know when I post another video and you're not just relying on them to randomly show you my video. And it helps me out. So when that was all done, I decided, oh no, it was like too yellow or too brown. 
I wanted to go in with the gray. So I went with some gray paint and because there was the wax under that, it was still very easy for me to wipe on and wipe off. So that's what I'm doing. And then I decided it was a little too much gray. It looked too much like the original cement. So I'm going back in with some yellow paint, very thick, and then wiping it off. And then I got the look that I wanted. So here is my little message to you when it comes to DIYs. Don't be afraid to do stuff. You can repaint almost anything. So that is what I did. I just kind of kept going until it looked the way that I wanted and it made sense. And I wanted it to look nice with all of my other pieces. Even though it took me a couple of tries, I love how it came out. For this DIY, I have a wood rolling pin. I'm pretty sure I picked this up at Hobby Lobby. They came in like a three or four pack. They were not very expensive at all. And I'm going in with some gray paint and an angle brush. And we're going to paint everything but the handles. So I'm using a little gray brush, just gonna take my time to do the edges here. Now you can also find mini rolling pins in the Dollar Tree or other places for different holidays, and you can just redo them. But I did happen to have this pack from Hobby Lobby. And, and then I'm gonna paint, obviously, the main part of it. This piece is a pretty rough wood, and I should have sanded it before I started. I'd realized as I was painting it, so once the first coat dried, I just gave that a good sanding. It didn't need to be perfect, but I knew I wanted it to be smoother for the next step. So I smoothed it out a little bit and then went ahead and did my second coat of paint. I'm just using an acrylic paint. This is one from HTV Rant, but any paint will do. Like I said, I'm just trying to work through what I've got in my stash. So I have this stencil from Dollar Tree. It was kind of hard. I couldn't really tape it. It wasn't working. I just held it on the best I could, and I'm using some of that yellow paint, trying to not have too much paint on my stencil brush so that it don't have any bleed through, and I'm just, I just kind of realized I was gonna get my hands messy, and that's okay. And stenciling on the word sweet, I just thought it was gonna be cute for the tiered tray, and it came out pretty good, but I wanted to finish out, the stencil like leaves little gaps in the letters, and I didn't want that font, so I'm just going in with a fine tip paintbrush and carefully just kind of going over the letters again and filling in any of those gaps in the letter. And if you have a small, fine tip paintbrush, you can do these things a lot easier. You don't have to be an artist. So I definitely encourage you to get some smaller paintbrushes in your craft supplies because it does make all of the difference in the world. So I'm just going over each of the letters. I'm also making it a little bit of a brighter yellow and I'm just covering up with those gaps. And we're gonna keep this one pretty simple. That is kind of the theme for today's video. I had this yellow and white baker's twine in my stash from the Dollar Tree, and I am just doing two pieces of it just to make it a little bit thicker, and I'm tying that around the handle and going to tie on a very simple bow. There's so many different ways that you can embellish this if you want, but I just wanted to keep it kind of clean and simple. The hardest part was tying a tiny <laughs> bow, but I was able to get it, so you know, just hang in there. I decided not to paint the handles of the rolling pin, but I love how this came out. I think it is nice and sweet, so let me know what you think down below. For this DIY, I have this wood cutting board that I had previously DIY'd, and I just thought it'd be fun to do it over again. So I'm trying my hand at some power tools. I have this sander that a friend sent to me. Thank you so much. And I finally got brave enough to try it. I'm still getting the hang of it, but um, you could use a sanding block, but a power sander definitely works better. My husband was filming and coaching me, but I got this thing sanded down. This is gonna be so handy when grabbing like Dollar Tree signs that are covered in glitter and all of that. Um, it'll be so much easier. But anyways, we're gonna sand this down so we have a fresh start. I didn't go all the way down to the wood the whole way around because I didn't really need it to, but I was proud of myself for trying something new. We're gonna give this little cutting board a coat of Silver Lining by Waverly. I have had a lot of these paints for a while and they've gotten really thick, so that is why I'm trying to just work through them before I have to toss them, because I don't wanna waste anything. But I'm gonna give this a couple of coats. I think I did two coats in the front and back and just one on the side, because that just still had that white paint on it. But obviously, you're gonna paint yours in whatever colors that you like. This is just for ideas and inspirations and, you know, you guys know all of that, but we're going to make ourselves a little a double-sided cutting board sign for my tiered tray. 
when I painted the handle, a little bit of paint got down in the hole, so I just took a wooden skewer and cleaned that out. Now, for one side, I'm just going to simply take a decal. I honestly didn't realize how quite how light this was um, when I first went to do this because um, my friend sent me this decal once again. Thanks so much. <laughs> But um, I do like how it came out because it almost looks a little bit yellow. So it actually matched really cute and um, matched really cute. It matched really well and it was cute. So I did the decal on one side and then the other. I have this stencil from Hobby Lobby. It's a two peat pack stencil set, $1.99 or of course less. This was a seasonal item. I think I got it when it was 40% off or 50% off. I don't exactly remember. I like the stencils from Hobby Lobby. And I think this butterfly is so pretty. And I did it off to the side a little bit so that it's like purposefully not all on the sign. Um, I knew it wasn't all going to fit. So I did it this way and I think it's really cute. So stenciling it, make sure you don't have too much paint so you don't have any bleed through. And that is how this one came out. I really, really love the butterfly side, but I also love the stencil, faith, family, food, perfect for a kitchen. I thought a little book stack would be perfect for the tier tray. I wanted to show you because I'd previously done these. These are the little mini Bibles at Dollar Tree, like the New Testaments. And I've just wrapped them with white craft paper and taped them. So I did not alter them at all. And so these are the perfect size for a little tier tray. As you could see, there was orange pumpkins painted on them because I've previously done another book stack with them. So I'm just going to stick that book in the middle and pull out these stamps from the Dollar Tree. Now I only have black ink for my stamps, so I wanted to try it with some paint. And I just tried to be really careful to not like push down with this pouncer brush and get like too much paint on it. I really just kind of brush across the top, but I wanted to use more of this yellow paint. And I thought this bird stamp was really cute and good for this. So it worked really good. I just tried really hard to clean them off right away with a baby wipe. And then I did take them to the sink and paint and like, uh, wash them with soap and water because with the paint, it was just so pigmented. It was did not come off as easy as the ink. Um, in that stamp set, it also had the words enjoy life and I failed to film it, but you can see here that I just took some gray twine and wrapped that around and put a little piece of floral on there. And that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you like the color palette? Is there any of these that you want to try making? Did you learn anything new? Subscribe if you're new to my channel. I would love to have you be a part of my little YouTube family. Here is the tear tray. I love how this one came out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.